If you are developing a mobile game, you sometimes need to move, zoom, or rotate the ground. And sometimes you need to do this at the same time. And this is what we do in this video. So it can be quite challenging, especially if it's not a camera pointing directly top down, but some kind of sideways. But I will make it easy and the experience will be as viewing some images or maps on your smartphone. I definitely recommend you to download the Unity Remote app. Um, you will notice some lags and delays, but I promise you as soon as you build your app and have it natively on your phone, the complete game will run very smooth. So the only thing you need is this script scroll and pinch and an object uh, that you can use to attach it. The object is just for defining this normal, you can see right here, and the position of the plane. And this plane is used to really define the scrolling and the movement of your fingertips. You have to attach a camera, just grab the main camera and attach it to the camera slot. And you can decide if you want to have a rotation feature or not. You can find the link to the script down in the description. Okay, let's start with a little bit of theory. So here you can see the camera, you can see the screen here, and you see the landscape there. Basically what we were doing is we will track the finger. For example, you tip here on the screen. Uh, you have to imagine that this is your smartphone. We will cast away and see where the ray is going. For example, to this tree right here. And uh, it doesn't have to be an object or something. It's just for uh, explanation that here is the point we mark. In the next frame, we move the finger a little bit down, a little bit to the left, and there we go. This is the next frame. And we will cast away again. And maybe it will be here. And the only thing uh, we have to do is to move the map in this direction here. Okay, here we are in the script. I just created a scroll and pin script and added some preprocessor statements uh, that this code is only accessible in Unity for iOS or Unity for Android. So it doesn't make any sense to try to pinch with your mouse. And uh, that's the reason why you should use the remote app of Unity because then you can really test it. First step, very simple, we will add the camera. Just a public camera so that we have a camera slot. And if the camera is now, we will take the main camera on awake. Next up, the plane. The plane is protected. We will construct this plane. We will use this plane just for calculations. And this plane is a 3D object, a Unity object that is not really a, a mesh. It's just a object for calculations. And we will update the plane. So we will set the normal and the position. The normal and the position is exactly the normal of the transform, so the up vector, and the position of the transform Next up, we add this um, method here called plane position. And you will insert a screen position. This will be uh, a screen position of your finger on the screen in pixels, I guess. And we create a way. So like in physics, you can say the camera screen point to way and you pass in the screen posi position and you will get out a way. Back in the editor, for example, you touch here and you want this way that is pointing towards the camera direction. Now we can use the constructed plane and create a ray cast. We will insert the ray and we will get out the distance the ray traveled. This means in our example, we will have the plane here, this is a big plane. Here is the edge. And then we will cast a ray and then our application will say, okay, here you have entered the plane exactly where this tree is, for example, and the return value is a distance from the start to the collision. And to really get this point here or this point, say way now, get the point and you enter the distance. This is just a helper function. We will need a second one. The other one is plane position delta you insert a touch. The touch is accessible through the input and is really just a finger. And 
Imagine this is a screen you touch anywhere, then you have the event touch begin, then you move it in the next frame, then it's a touch face move, and then you are at the destination, and then it's a touch face uh, end. And we only want to do um, a delta calculation. So this means uh, how far have we moved from A to B if we are in the touch face move. Otherwise, the vector 3, 0 will be returned. So we do the same thing as uh, before. Way now and way before are two ways. It's the same as here. And then we will just way cast here and there. And back in Unity, it will look like this. I touched here, I moved here, two ways. Pointing to the ground, we have these two positions, and then we know this is a delta of these positions. Not in screen size, but in the world size. To get the delta, we will uh, subtract these two points. Now let's come to the fun part, the update method. We will need uh, two variables called delta1 and delta2. Let's implement the scroll. So scroll applies to the script only if we have one or more fingers touching the screen. And then we say input get touch zero. This is the first finger that enters the screen. And then we use our function to get the delta. This means if we have a tree here and a tree here, and for example, move from this tree to this tree, then we will get this vector here. So, and if there was a move uh, in this touch, then I can say, okay, camera transform translate the camera, not as a map, so we will only move the camera by this delta. And make sure to make it in world space because this plane position delta is in world space. This is the first time you can try our script out. So as you can see, we can move the screen. Okay, let's continue by pinch. Just under scroll, we add the pinch. The pinch applies to the script only if the touch count is two fingers or more. So uh, the first finger is always set correctly due to the script. And then we will receive uh, the plane positions for our two fingers. So imagine the following situation. You have the first finger here and it's pointing to this tree here and you have the other finger here pointing to this one. And then you have a delta movement for example, move the second finger from here to here. And this results in a new position here. Um, then you could rotate it. If you move your finger far away from your first finger, then you will uh, result in the point here. And based on these values, you have to either zoom in, so the camera has to get c closer to uh, or zoom out, the camera has to go far away so that this tree is here after we update our screen. And otherwise, uh, if we rotate the, sc the screen, then the camera has to move so that this tree will be displayed here. It sounds complex, but uh, let's go. So we have uh, also a position before our current screen. So this is a first finger and the first finger minus the position of the first finger before we rendered the last frame and the same with the second finger. And then here is a zoom. So the distance before divided by the distance after is a zoom factor. And this uh, zoom factor is not always applied. For example, if you have a zoom of zero or 10, something is really wrong with our calculations, we shouldn't uh, continue. But otherwise, we just uh, set the position on the vector between our first position and the current camera set to one divided by zoom. Okay, what does it mean? So for example, imagine you have your first finger here, the second finger here, and this is a distance of one, just for simplicity. And after the frame, you have your second finger here and your first finger here, and this is a distance of two and this is our zoom factor. One divided by two, it's 0 
So this factor we have to zoom, so we zoom out. And after this frame, this whole image will be here, and this image will be here. And so the screen will zoom in to maybe, yeah, this size. Okay, this is how we calculate the zoom factor, but where do we set our camera? So first of all, we have our camera here and the first finger uh, is touching to this position. And now we have a long line here. And we take one minus the zoom or one divided by the zoom. And this is the value it sits on this vector. For example, this is one and one divided by a half in our example is a two and so maybe two is here with this complete distance then the camera will be moved from here to this point here <coughs> okay we can test it the zoom is working pretty solid let's continue with the rotation the last thing we will introduce a rotate uh, variable and then we say if the rotate variable is activated and uh, we really changed the position of the second finger, we will do a rotation. So we will rotate around the first finger um, and the axis is always a plane normal and then the angle is the first position, uh, the second position minus the first position um, and the second position minus the first position before this frame and everything is always directed to the plane normal. This means we have to go up, so it's easier up here. So if we point here and here and um, do a rotation, for example, move this a little bit to here, then we take this point as our pivot and then rotate around and the degree x degree is equal to this angle here from here to here so basically these angles are the same so we will calculate it here from the movement between uh, those two actions and then apply it here. if this was too fast for you take a deeper look into the description there is a script you can download it uh, or you just uh, use the script and do not care about the coding. So if you liked the video, leave a like. It would really help me. Bye. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.